Hello and welcome to yet another task video. What I'm planning on today is showing you how to set up my destroy object uh, task. So here we have three munition boxes. Uh, I've already named them as you might be able to see and there's also a quad bike. And my plan is to have a task to destroy these four objects. Now all we need to do for this is go into the mission folder scripts, necky tasks, and we're gonna open up run sqf as always and if you scroll about a bit you will find the destroy objects part and let's get to it so we're just gonna start with the open bracket and task type 5 and then we're gonna do open bracket for the parameters and then the unique task name destroy objects I think you can use spaces in here not completely sure and then we're gonna do the task description uh, so what we're gonna call this destroy enemy supplies and vehicles inside the compound and this title of this task will be this sorry I need to do a quotation mark destroy uh, what should I call it vehicle supplies equipment uh and in, let, let's let's do let's do equipment let's do equipment that should do fine um close bracket comma next parameter the parameter next is destination where the task will be placed on the map so we can use xyz or marker and I'll just be a little bit lazy. I can actually do car one. So the quad bike is called car one. So I can do get pass car one. There we go. So now it's gonna get the position of the quad bike and that's where the task is gonna be on the map. If you don't want it placed on the map, then you just type obj null, which is explained there. Next is the objects. It can be one object or it can be several objects. So now we just need to do open bracket and quotation mark and we said quad bike is called car1 so car1 and uh, quotation mark comma and then we have the boxes box1, box2, box3 so let's do box1, box2, box3 close bracket comma so that's all the objects and now damage true the vehicle needs to be fully destroyed or the vehicle needs to be disabled aka cannot move uh, in this case I want them to be completely destroyed go to be executed upon task completion no I can't be bothered with that I don't need anything like that right now, but even if I would, uh, it would return true if the task was completed. Uh, the code will only be executed on the server, so you can use this to chain things. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, I've already shown this, but I'm going to show it in this one as well. Um, so let's do spawn Nikki tasks run. So let's take all of this. Let's take this and cut it out let's go into the tasks folder again I want this to be shown in the briefing screen so I'm gonna put it in the init now I'm gonna do a little th sorry 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 I'm gonna do another thing I'm actually gonna change things up a bit um, I want this to appear after we have downloaded data so we have a task here in the init which is to download data and that is from a laptop in the military HQ right here right there download data from there will create a task to secure this area that's what this trigger is for where we do not have any enemies right now so I guess I better put a few in there now we have some enemies inside there um, so downloading the data will create the task for um, taking out these contacts now I want to do the same thing I want to chain this laptop to create a task for these uh, destroying these objects right here now uh, what I did in that previous video was that I 
I chained it to the actual code in uh, in the init file. Now another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define a variable. So for example, t1 equals true, and then I'm gonna type public variable quotation mark. Sorry, I'm not supposed to type type it. Uh, t1 and semicolon. There we go. So now t1 is gonna once you have downloaded data, t1 is going to be true, it's going to become true. And this means I can place a trigger. I can place it right there if I want to, I can place it on the other side of the map. Now what I need to do is type t1 there. Now once I've downloaded data, it defines t1 as true, and then this condition will return true, meaning it will activate the trigger. If I paste the destroy objects code in here, uh, that's going to create the task through the trigger. So if you have a task, if you created a task which is not through my script, you can do something like this where if you download data, T1 becomes true, which fires this trigger, which then activates all this. Or if you just wanna, ha if you just have a trigger where which is just synchronized to things left and right, up and down, uh, you can just put this in the activation and it's gonna work. So let's save. Let's make sure my init SQF is saved. It is now. And let's load through. As we can see, among the tag, uh, sorry, tasks, there is no such thing as destroy objects. So we're just gonna have to load through. And we also have to download the data, which is done shortly. There we go. So now we can see download data, new task, destroy equipment, new task, secure compound. So now we can see uh, the task to destroy object. So destroy enemy supplies and vehicles inside compound. Brilliant. So let's uh, do it. All oh, right, damn it. There we go. There we go. So we've secured compound. Okay, we now need to destroy these objects. How can we do so? Uh, now uh, they are stupid enough to be uh, having uh, or stocking uh, explosives right here. So I'm just gonna put that one there, and let's grab another one, and let's put that Area one. Clear. Oh, horrible, horrible scroll wheel actions. Okay, let's exit the compound and fire in the hole. Equipment has been destroyed and some of the wall and some of a building and there's the quad bike. So the boxes have been destroyed, the quad bike has been destroyed, the task has been completed and that's all there's to it. Um, if we just take a quick look into the run SQF again uh, there is this thing with uh, the vehicle only needs to be s disabled. Um, in this case, I think if we abort and if we look into this trigger, now we know that I'm fairly sure it's that one. So we have the parameters and we have objects and after the objects we have damage and if we do false the vehicle only needs to be disabled aka cannot move so if I take that turn that true into false right there I save and I load through alright as you can see data has been downloaded the tasks have been created now if I just go in and I take care of these Alright, so what I believe all we need to do now, I believe these are defined as cannot move. Let's see here. Can move, cursor, of, oh, they actually count as able to move. That's interesting. So I think if we destroy these, they can no longer move, but they're also destroyed. So now this one counts as able to move. So if we take out the tires, I wonder what this is going to do with it. It now counts as cannot move and the task should complete within a few seconds. There we go. So you can do something like sabotage uh, vehicles and you don't need to fully destroy them. I think all you need to do is 
take out the fuel system and have them run out of fuel, destroy the engine or take out enough tires where it is so badly damaged. Yeah, it's just not gonna run. Uh, the fuel thing, I just realized this one is already set to zero fuel, so the fuel is not part of it. But I'm really sure that if you take out the engine, destroy the engine or take out enough tires for it to barely be able to move, it counts as disabled. So uh, there you have it. That's all of the destroy objects uh, functions and I hope you enjoyed.